In the final example on this page, we're going to find so another 2D object, but instead of being, I guess, um, point masses, like the thing that we did up above here, um, like bowling balls, now we've got this um, gigantic plate, right? I guess I got a little overzealous with these dimensions. This must be like a part of an aircraft carrier or something, with this being 12 meters. Um, so we're going to find the center mass of this thing. There are a couple ways to look at this. Um, the one that... Um, people usually see first, and I think is the one that I'm going to do, is they'll tend to see that like this looks like a square over here with a little um, rectangle attached. So um, I guess sometimes people will see this small rectangle here and then another big rectangle. You can do it that way too, but I'm going to do it with a square and a little, little rectangle. So you kind of divide it into two objects, um, and then you can kind of treat it like sort of two point masses because you have one object that is centered here at like over four and up four. I'm gonna say four, four. That would be like the center of this part. And then let's find the center of this guy. Um, let's see, this is three meters. So the, so the middle would be like one and a half from either side. Well, you must already be five up. So five up plus another one and a half, that would give you like a Y coordinate of what? Six and a half, 6.5. And then um, for going this way, Let's see, this is 8 and this is 12. So this guy must be 4 meters long, this part. So that means the center of it would be 2 meters over. So we must go 8 plus 2 or 10. So this coordinate must be 10, right? So now what we're going to do is use these two objects to get in and find the center of mass of these two things, okay? Now you notice nothing is given here but the weight. So, so for example, like let's say we go to set this up. It's like, all right. Cool, I'm off and running. I'm going to find the, the X center of mass. And the, I'm going to go, okay, object one. Well, it's at position four. But then how do I decide how much it's worth? Because nobody gave me any mass for this thing. Well, the idea is if, if it's, uh, we have to assume it's a uniform plate because otherwise there's no way we could do the problem. So the idea is whatever this mass is here, it must go like the area, the area of this plate. So this, this plate would be eight by eight or 64 would be like, the, that's sort of like the mass of this plate. And then this would be three times four, this would be like a 12, um, you know, kilogram thing if every square meter is a, is a kilogram, something like that. So, so what we would do for the X center mass, we'd say, well, position four, which is the X coordinate of this thing, why well, that's worth 64. And position, um, what do we do? gotta do, 10. Position 10, that is worth 12. Oops, because that's like the area of this bit. So position four is worth 64, position 10 is worth 12. And then we get to divide by the total mass, which would be 64 plus 12, um, which would be 76. So we have to do four times 64, um, four times 64 plus 120, and then divide by 76. Um, let me not mess this up, divided by 76, I get 4.95 meters. Just to see if that makes sense, here would be four. It's saying to go over a little, just a little, which makes sense because you have this kind of extra chunk over here. So, you know, center mass is like somewhere here-ish, just kind of trying to make that up. And then let's get the, um, the Y coordinate of the center mass, Y, C, M. Well, position four, that's the y-coordinate of this thing, that's where 64. And position, how far do we go up? Six and a half, that's where 12. And then we get to divide by the total mass again, divide by 76. So let's do it again. So I'll say four times 64 plus 6.5 times 12. You get that number and then you divide it by 76. So you get 4.39 for the center of mass. So there's four, and we gotta go up just a hair, so it's like, it's like maybe here, the center of mass. So if you chucked this thing in the air, it would, it would rotate around, around this place. Now, so that's, that's how most people would handle this one. Um, something I wanna have you run through now that we know the answer. Another way that you could do this, all right, is Instead of seeing it as a square in a rectangle or as a little rectangle in a big rectangle and using those two objects, 
Another way to do this is actually see it as an, a complete block that's this big, right? So that, so that would be, you just pretend the whole slab is there. Um, and then, and here's where it gets weird. Then for this little part that's missing, you actually attribute a negative mass to this thing, right? Now, full disclosure, right? Negative mass in physics is really not meaningful because, you know, why is that? Well, because if you think about F equals MA, if a negative mass would mean if you applied a force, it would accelerate in the opposite direction, which is just weird. So um, don't really see that, but as a mathematical tool, this kind of works here. So just as the giveaway, um, and I'd like you to run through the calculation, just make sure you get the same numbers. But if you do it another way, so I'm going to write that here. Let's say another way is what you do is you say object one. That would be the big rectangle, full rectangle. Okay, and what that's going to do is that is going to have an area of 12 times 8. Area equals 12 times 8, uh, which is 96. So that's like the mass of the full thing, if it were there. And then object 2, because we're kind of treating it like two objects, that is the little rectangle, the missing rectangle. that says missing and then R-A-C-T for rectangle. And now what you want to do is give it like a negative area or negative mass. And so this thing is going to be four by, how tall is this? Five, is that right? Yeah. And this is four, yes. So four by five. So what you'll do is you'll give it an area or a mass of negative 20, okay? So those are your two objects. The um, for example, for the, here, let's just do the cent X center of mass, at least set it up. So the, the X center of mass would be, okay, well, the first object is the full thing with its X coordinate being six because this thing's 12 meters long and the whole thing is worth 96. And then what we want to do is add to it the um, position, well, the, the center of mass of the, or center X center of this thing is at six, the X center of this thing would be over 10 because eight plus half of four, so over 10, but then you give it a mass of negative 20. Okay, and then you divide by the total mass, which would be 96 minus 20, right? And you'll see that'll give you the same answer for the X center of mass. So just give it a try and with the Y center of mass, just a neat little trick that, uh, and just kind of foreshadowing something that might, will come up in electricity and magnetism for those of you taking that part of the class.